So I am Dr. Laura Schell. I am the new Associate Dean for Academic Affairs here at UCF College of Medicine. And today we're going to go through the basics of the eye exam. Um, and one of the things that we're going to try to do today is just sort of give you an understanding of what you're going to do with that handheld scope um, and how to use it, what the technical issues are, and then how to best position the patient so that you can actually land on the disc, which is really the, the, the key finding that you're going to be able to do for the, um, for the eye exam. So this is the basic handheld ophthalmoscope. Um, and some of the basic um, findings that you're going to want on this is in the front, you're going to see that there's um, sort of three filters and a little thing that you can push to one side or the other. You want to be on the middle filter. There's, um, there's a green filter that's basically for um, where you can kind of see blood in the retina. There's the middle filter, which is sort of like unfiltered. And there's an X, which is a polarized lens. Lens. You're going to want to be on the on the middle filter, so that's basically where you want to be in terms of your home base. Let's see if you can see on my hand. Maybe you can't. Um, the light gets a little bit brighter and a little bit darker, and that's from turning this knob here. So this gives you the highest intensity. But there's a little wheel on the front here that turns, and basically what that does, as you can see on my hand again. You can see that that's kind of like the little circle, and it gets a, um, a little bit bigger circle, then an even bigger circle, and then you have uh, basically a, almost like a periscope, and then a slit lamp, and then another blue filter. You want to basically be on the middle circle. And then you, when you want to look in the back of someone's eye, you want to turn this down to almost the lowest intensity that can be just because it's a very, very bright light, and you want to make sure that this is not burning the back of someone's retina while you're looking back there, okay? On this side, you should be able to see, and I don't know if I can see it on here, there is, um, it is on um, a white zero. That is basically home base. You can turn it, and it goes into the red numbers in one way, so that's a red one, red two. You can turn it back to the white zero, and then back in the other direction, and you go into the green numbers. What is the importance of those things? So the red numbers are basically an infinite lens. So the focal length doesn't change, if you remember from physics. Um, so once you have it set at a particular focal length, um, uh, it's going to maintain that focus at that length no matter how far away you are. The green lenses are actually magnification lenses. And so every time you change the green lens, it changes the focal length, and you're going to have to change how far away you are from the image for it to be in focus. So the first thing that we're going to do, and this is really supposed to be an interactive video for you. Um, so there's points in time where you may want to pause. There's like little skill sections for us to, to go through. So the first little skill section that I want you to do is um, take your ophthalmoscope and turn it to a green 5. And once you do that, you're going to look at the back of your hand and you're going to see how close do I need to get to be perfectly in focus in the back of my hand. And you can kind of see where that distance might be. And then I want you to turn it to a green 10 and see that you need to actually get even closer to your hand than you were before for you to maintain focus. Now the reason for this is that the green lenses are really good at looking at anterior surfaces of the eye, but not at the back of the eye. So you should never be looking or trying to look at the optic disc or the retina or the back of the eye with, green, uh, with the green lenses. They should only be used with either the zero or one of the um, negative numbers. So anterior surfaces would be anterior surfaces of the cornea, the iris, the anterior chamber, or the lens. That's really the distance that you're trying to look for, okay? So why don't you go ahead and practice that and you can pause the video. All right, so now that, I, now that you've worked with that green lens and you've uh, kind of got a feeling of, of um, how it's sort of that magnification lens and that, that distance changes, what I want you to do is now sort of set up where your home base is. So um, 
the, you, some people will talk about correcting for um, the patient's vision, and you do that through the red numbers, so red one, red two. If the patient wears glasses, you may have to make corrections for, their, for imperfections in their lens. But if you wear glasses, there's two choices that you can make. You can either start with a zero. If your glasses actually fix your vision completely, you won't need to change anything. And so what you'll do is you'll find a spot um, at some sort of distance along the wall. You can use any, any kind of writing or poster or anything like this and start with a zero and then you're going to play basically the game that you go the, to the optometrist. So they're going to move the wheel and say better or worse and you kind of figure it out. So you kind of look through and you say, uh, is, that, is that clear? You change it maybe one. And for me, even a negative one makes it blurry. So my vision is still 2020, so my home base is zero. And each eye might be a little bit different. So you can do that with your right eye, and then you can do it with your left eye, and you can sort of do the same thing, and you can look at a zero. For me, that's clear. So the reason that we do that is that you always want to start on your home base. So if you feel comfortable using your glasses, you, and your glasses are fixing your vision perfectly, then you will likely start on a zero and everything will look clear with that zero. If you don't feel comfortable using your glasses and you want to take them off, you're going to have to correct for your vision and the ophthalmoscope will actually be able to do that for you. So you can change it to a negative one or a negative two, but, um, which is in the red numbers, um, but that's always going to be your home base. That's where you start. So one of the things that I always know is that um, if I see you looking in someone's eye and you're just doing this with the, um, with the lens up and down, that tells me that you probably aren't doing what you need to be doing. Because you're going to start on that zero or that red one or that red two. That's going to be your home base. And you may only have to move it one or two slots based upon the patient's um, um, vision if they wear glasses and you need to correct for that. So take a moment and practice and find out where your home base number is and that's the, that's the number that you're always going to start with. So um, when you look at someone's eye, um, the first thing that we're going to do is I want you to, we're going to practice some of the um, anterior chamber um, skills. So again, we're going to be using the green numbers, so we're going to be using the magnification lens. So what I want you to do is I want you to put this, and this is where you might need a partner, um, to actually put this on a green five, so you're using a magnification lens, and I want you to focus on um, your partner's iris. So just look at, so get close enough where the iris is actually where you need it to be. And part of the technique that we're going to be using is you always kind of put your thumb on their eyebrow, and you're going to go opposite the eye. And what you want to do is just get close enough where the iris becomes perfectly in focus. So you'll have to move just a little bit back and forth. And once you get that, what I want you to do is look into the pupil and then just describe to yourself what it is that you see. Okay? So th this is a little bit about um, observation skills. Okay? Um, and I'll, I'll give you a moment to kind of do that and, and switch off and, and with your partner. And both of you guys get a chance to sort of describe what it is that you see when you're focused on that iris, and then you kind of look into um, the pupil um, and kind of see all the surrounding structures, what it is that you actually see. So now that you've done that exercise where you've used the green five and you're looking at the iris, um, one of the things that I, I, we, we like to talk about is when you look in the back of the eye, what you likely saw was sort of like this kind of a red blur in the back. Because the, you're, what you're seeing in the back there is the retina, um, but it's out of focus, okay? Because the, the, the green lens is focusing 
just on the anterior portion of the eye. It's not focusing on the back of the eye, okay? And so if you looked back there, you probably saw this. The other thing that you probably saw is you probably saw a very sharp light, point of light, and then maybe you saw kind of a fuzzier point of light that was off to the side, okay? And what you're seeing here, again, if you remember from physics, if the cornea is here and you have the anterior and you have the lens, this space in here is the anterior chamber. As your um, light is shining on here, it's actually reflecting back off um, on this level, and it's also reflecting off of the lens. And wherever this light is actually focused on, so if it's focused on the cornea, then that area is going to be the sharp point of light, and then the, the lens in the back is going to be more of a fuzzy point of light. And what you can do when you get really good with this is you can be focused on these two points of light and move just a little bit back and forth, maybe only um, a two or three or four millimeters, and what you'll find is you're focusing now on this whole anterior chamber. So as you change the focus of these two lights, you change from focusing on the cornea, on the surface of the eye, to focusing on the anterior portion of that lens. And anything that occurs in this anterior chamber, whether they be blood cells, white blood cells, um, red blood cells, any kind of inflammatory um, materials, that's basically where you're going to see. So this is the real purpose for using those green lenses, is to really focus on that anterior portion of the eye, the cornea, the anterior chamber, and the anterior surface of that lens. So one of the things that you have probably seen in other videos on um, looking in the back of the eye is that you start out somewhere very lateral, find a vessel, and then follow the, ve follow the vessel back to um, the optic disc. Um, what I'm going to teach you is basically how to effectively land right on the optic disc the very first time that you do it. Okay? And so the way that you do that, it's very much about positioning. So right now, I'm above the patient's eye level, and what I really want to do is I want to sink down right so I'm facing them eye to eye. Okay? Then you want to have the patient look over this shoulder and slightly up at a point in the wall so that they can actually focus what they're doing. And then you move over about 20 degrees, and from this position, you know anatomically that you're going to be landing very close to the optic disc because it's a little bit medial and it's a little bit down. So when you're from this position, if you go straight in from this point, you're likely to land right on the optic disc. This is probably the most crucial point of what it is that you're going to do because a lot of folks what I have seen is that they will get to this, they will, they will start over here and they will end up way too uh, medial or they, way too lateral. But you want to make sure that you're eye level and about 20 degrees off and you go straight in to actually see the patient's optic disc. If you are able to land on or close to the optic disc, it's going to reduce the amount of time that you're going to be um, shining that bright light in the back of the patient's eye. It's going to be more comfortable for the patient and it's going to give you the opportunity to land on that disc much, much sooner. Okay? So one last thing before we actually look in the back of the patient's eye is I want to sort of mitigate your expectations of what you're about to see. So what you will likely see, what you're going for with the disc, is most people think that you're going to see this really clear, pale, white disc that's going to be very obvious and it's going to jump out to you and say, I am the optic disc. That does not happen. What you will likely see are two vessels that kind of crisscross like this. They're going to be the two biggest vessels in the back of the eye. And then you might see kind of like an area that's a little bit more pale around here. Now the problem with using uh, a handheld ophthalmoscope in a patient that has an undilated eye is that you are not going to see the entire back of the retina. What you might actually see is only this much. And so you're going to have to move that around a little bit for you to effectively see the entire disc. You will likely not be able to see it all in one shot. So you're really looking at where those vessels crisscross, and that's really what your goal is when you're, when you're looking for someone, uh, when you're looking for the disc in the back of someone's eye. Okay? So we're now back with the patient. And again, you want to have, make sure that you have your positioning done. 
I'm on a white um, zero, which is basically where my home base is. So remember what your home base was for your particular um, eye. You want to make sure that you're going right eye to right eye, okay? If I go right eye to left eye, you're going to end up nose to nose with the patient. It's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. So you want to make sure that you go right eye to right eye. And again, I like to put my thumb on their eyebrow, okay? Eye to eye, look over my shoulder, find that spot. Go eye, um, I put my thumb on their eyebrow. And I go about 20 degrees out, just look it down a little bit for me, just right over my shoulder. There we go. Now, from right here, believe it or not, I can actually already see her disc. Because remember, the zero and the red numbers are an infinite lens. So the focal point, once it's in focus, it doesn't matter if you're five feet away, five inches away, or five millimeters away, it's going to maintain that focus. So I basically look right here and I say, okay, am I in focus or not? And I may move it just one, that actually moves it a little bit out of focus. And once I have it, then I move straight in and I land right on the disc. And I can move just a little bit to try to see everything I need to see. And that's it. Now the difference, the other thing that you want to think about is that the reason that we put your thumb on their eyebrow is that when I get close enough where I'm almost touching my thumb, that's basically you know you're close enough. And you have to think about this is that you're looking at the back of a room basically through a pinhole. So the further away you have that pinhole, the smaller portion of the back of the room you're going to see. The closer you get to the pinhole, the more of the back of the room that you're actually going to be able to see. So that's a very basic overview of how to use the um, handheld ophthalmoscope, how to do the basic eye exam, looking at both anterior and um, um, retinal structures. The biggest thing that you're really looking for um, in the back of the eye is really the optic disc to determine whether or not there's any kind of swelling, any papilledema. Um, it, with any exam, this is probably the most um, the most key is that you're going to have to practice this a lot to get comfortable, not just using this ophthalmoscope, but actually doing this exam and, and trusting yourself that what you're seeing is, is, um, is, are those vessels in that disc at the back of the eye. So practice this a lot um, and, and you'll get um, better and this will be a great skill for you to have in your um, toolbox.